they assassinated their entire audience at the stroke of midnight. I was the only survivor. Sex and drugs saved my life. If you're into death metal, then you're probably a fan of murder. They come from Scandinavia and their following is ridiculous. How Ricky, the manager of Dive Bar, that's actually the bar's name, managed to book them is beyond me, but he did. And he's dead because of it. My city is still in full lockdown. I've been out of work for almost a year, same as my boss Ricky. So when I got a call from him a week before Christmas, it came as a surprise. Brandon, my man, what's been happening, mate? He didn't wait for an answer. Good, good. Now listen, I didn't want to text you this and have you fuck it up, so I called instead. Hope that's all right. Same old Ricky. I need your band to play a secret staff Christmas party at the dive bar. You'll be performing in the basement. That way, no one will hear or see anything. You good with that, mate? This time, he waited for a reply. Um, yes. I'll have to check with the band, but sure. I checked. The band was happy to play. My band is called SSIK. This was our first gig in nine months. Needless to say, we had a blast. After the show, Ricky pulled me into his smoky little office and asked if SSIK was interested in playing in a private party, opening for murder. Murder? Hell yeah! What could possibly go wrong? Murder brought a guillotine. It was the coolest thing I've seen in my life. It was silver and sharp and dare I say sexy in a medieval torture kind of way. They also brought a 13 person road crew who took 12 hours to set up for the show. The band and their crew refused to speak to anyone. And when they did, they spoke Scandinavian. So no one understood what they were saying. It didn't matter. They were murder. A hundred people squeezed into the dive bar basement for the killer show, literally. SSIK's set went off without a hitch. I sang, um, well, I screamed better than I've ever screamed in my life. We even did an encore. Then came murder. Now, typically, when a band uses a fog machine, they don't poison the crowd with this stuff. But murder did. They emptied three full canisters as they hit the stage. One woman, dressed in a black crushed velvet dress, dropped dead right away. She was sitting in a leather couch in the corner clutching her asthma inhaler. Nobody even noticed her until the cops came an hour and a half later. By then, the dive bar looked like a scene from the goriest horror movie ever made. I'll let you pick which one. Murder wore black leather gear. They had long black hair and faces painted like demons. I was impressed. Their singer had metal studs pierced all over his entire body and a bloody pentagram stitched onto his bare chest. They opened their set with their most popular song, Crusted Corpse. Then a roadie handed the singer a large samurai sword. The audience wowed. The drummer kicked into the second song. The singer, branding the colossal silver sword, pulled some dude on stage. Everyone cheered. The dude started headbanging, clearly enjoying himself, oblivious to his gruesome fate. During what may have been the chorus on the song, the singer swung the sword and cut the dude's head off. The crowd erupted. Amazing special effects. Except it wasn't special effects. 
it was real. I was standing on the side of the stage and watched as the dead dude's head rolled clumsily to my feet. Blood and brains and bones spewed out everywhere. It was revolting. Remember, I just performed and I was getting paid in alcohol so I was extremely drunk. So stupidly, I kicked the severed head into the audience who proceeded to knock it around like a beach ball. The singer kept shouting orders at the crowd and the crowd clung to his every word. I had a sobering moment. I realized just how depraved these people had become. With so much pent up stress being released all at once, these people were out of their minds. Everyone wanted to be rid of 2020 as quickly as possible. If only they knew what murder was planning for them. I searched for Ricky, who was behind the bar serving drinks. The line up to the bar was ridiculous. I convinced myself nothing was wrong. Murder, following in the tradition of Alice Cooper, Gua and Slipknot, were merely putting on an elaborate show with plenty of shock value. It was all part of the show, fun for the whole family. Then came the guillotine. The crowd was bloodthirsty. The singer requested a volunteer. A sexy, middle-aged woman jumped on stage. She had wild, frizzy red hair, a tight black dress and Dr. Martin boots. I knew her. Her name was Brenda. The singer slapped her, gagged her, tied her arms with rope and shoved her head under the blade. The crowd was murderous. They were chanting, off with her head, off with her head. All eyes remained on the guillotine. The drummer started a long, speedy drum roll. First quiet, then louder and louder. The bassist started an evil sounding groove. The guitarist joined in. It was the most horrible song I've ever heard. The music got louder and louder, rising into a frenzy, then whack. Down came the blade. Brenda's decapitated head rolled to the front of the stage. Her lifeless body twitched, then went still. The singer jumped off the speaker, picked up her severed head and waved it high as though it was his trophy. Then he tossed it into the crowd. I guess two heads are better than one. While Brenda's ghastly head was quickly being pulverized, her lifeless blue eyes remained open. Apparently she wanted to watch the remainder of the show. Still, no one flinched. I knew this wasn't an act, but I was too drunk to do anything. Plus, I was in shock. I just wanted to leave. Murder carried on. Their volume was deafening. I checked the time. It was almost midnight. The bassist, who looked like Gene Simmons, but somehow uglier, crept closer and closer to the crowd. His bass was shaped like an axe. The singer pulled another guy on stage and tossed him towards the bassist, who, unless my eyes deceived me, used his bass as a battle axe to cut the man's stomach open. Blood and guts spilled out all over the sticky stage. Even over the incredible noise, I heard the man's final scream. His dead hands were making the devil horn sign. It was like a scene from Metal Apocalypse. I felt like I was tripping on bad LSD. The singer reached into the dead man's intestines and pulled out a handful of stringy red goop. By this time, people were rushing onto the stage like savage idiots. The singer smeared guts all over one woman's face. She licked her face with her long protruding tongue. Her teeth immediately turned cherry red. The delight on the singer's face was undeniable. The music carried on. Now it was the guitarist's turn. 
he took his patch cord and used it to strangle an audience member, wrapping the long black cord around some guy's neck until it snapped. I watched in horror as his eyes bulged out of his head. His face turned bright red, then blue, then a ghostly white. The guitarist tossed the fresh corpse off the stage and back into the crowd, who then ripped the body to shreds. By now, some people were beginning to panic, but only a precious few. The drummer started slinging his drumsticks into the crowd like spears. There must have been razor blades shoved into them because I saw a drumstick sticking out of some college girl's eye. She freaked out and with both hands, pried it out of her head, taking her eyeball out in the process. The girl next to her snatched the eyeball and took a bite. It must have tasted awful because she immediately spat it out. Terrified and confused, I escaped to the restrooms, only to discover two gorgeous goth chicks doing lines off each other's breasts in the washroom stall. This was certainly the best part of the evening. They showed me one hell of a good time before they retreated to the front of the stage, just in time for murder's grand finale. The smell of the store was inexcusable. I waited. Then, I heard the screaming. I knew this was it. The countdown to 2021. The coke sobered me enough to call 999. But, I was too late. The fun had already begun. The band stopped at 11.59. The singer, standing at the front of the stage, pulled out his phone and started going live. The audience went berserk. Using broken English, he began the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year. I stayed hidden in the store and listened to the machine gun frenzy pop 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 pop. It was the sound of 100 people being executed. Murder's road crew had blocked all of the exits. The audience was trapped. After a minute of non-stop machine gun fire, the doomed audience was dead. The singer then turned the gun onto his bandmates and crew then finally himself. Everyone died that night, but me. I did another bump in the stinky stall and laughed. Despite myself, sex and drugs just saved my life.